Hey guys, we made it back to the home shop and I'm getting ready to begin the last phases of the machining for the hardtail vise. We had one more op on the dynamic jaw that I was gonna finish up on the shaper. So we've got it here, thought I would share this with you. It should be a pretty uh, short, quick little segment. And I know a lot of you guys love watching the shaper, so I wanted to uh, share this with you. So we've already got it set up there in the vise, as you can see. And I wanted to point out, this is, this is just one of the benefits of being able to use a shaper. You can kind of easily get up into sections like that right there. You can see I've got my tool in there. We've got it set at a 45 degree angle and I can easily use this to get in here and cut this little pad. Now, sir, you can set this up in a mill machine, come through here with a face mill. You're gonna to have to have a long gauge tool to be able to reach down here, but you're also gonna be coming out here and touching this surface as well. I would like to stay off of this and machine just this area right here. So when our line starts for our linear pattern, we'll just be right there at that existing line and going in. All right, so I do need to get that, I need to pull that tool out, I need to get it ground properly, and shouldn't be, you know, two or three passes maybe, we should be able to get that cut down. Been getting the old G&E warmed up here. I'm just gonna take you through the motion real quick so you guys can see what we're talking about. I know I'm not gonna crash, because I've already tested this. So that's going to work out great for getting that little pad area cleaned up. We're going to start off by cutting from the left side and feeding across this way. That's just to kind of get the bulk of the material down. Once we get down here to this floor, I'll probably feed from the right over to the left because we're just going to be taking a light cut at that point. To start off, I brought the tool over here and just, and just brought the tool down. And then once it touched here, I set my collar up at the top at a zero and then fed it back up. So I know from where we're at right now, after we clean this up, we'll still have another 150 thousandths to go to, to bring it approximately down to that surface. So we're ready to cut, here we go. And we're feeding to the left.
Okay, that was our first pass. All we did was just kind of nick the middle in the, in the center there. But I caught myself potentially making an error on this. Um, and that is, we have the clapper box swung to the right side, okay? So that when it lifts up, it actually arcs out this direction to clear the cut. So when you're feeding from the left to the right, you really need to have the clapper box swung the other way. You wanna, you wanna have the clapper box swung opposite direction of feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed from the right left. We're gonna feed from this side in since I've already got the clapper box. I've got the tool position where I want, so I don't wanna to have to redo this. So we're just gonna take it easy and feed that way. The other problem that this uh, poses right here, potentially, you see how we got the tool kind of kicked a little bit of an angle this way. When you're feeding into the tool that with that kind of angle there, you have the possibility that if the tool wants to dig in, it's gonna to try to spin that holder. And as it's doing that, it's actually digging into the workpiece. So it's commonly practiced that you have the tool swung in a, in, a, in a manner so that if it does start digging in, it actually starts pivoting it away, it doesn't dig in. But sometimes it's really hard to get away from that if you're doing internal shapes, if you're doing things like dovetails and stuff like that. So I think we're gonna be okay because we're not taking a lot of metal per pass and we'll be fine doing it just like this. 50 thousandths depth of cut, 20 thousandths step over. And getting a little bit of chatter, but that's just because we got so much stick out of that tool. I'm gonna roll with it. Taking another 50 here.
Okay, this is gonna be our final cut. I went ahead and touched off on the surface right there. And it was not completely cleaning it up from one side to the other. So that tells me that my, my vise here isn't squaring things up perfectly square. And that's helping me figure out that I have other issues going on with the shaper when you're trying to make things absolutely square and parallel to each other. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's just touching into the surface over there, but it's gonna look all nice and smooth. So hopefully this will be a nice finish cut. I'm gonna drop it down to a 10 thousandths step over and uh, finish that out. Whatever finish it leaves is where it's gonna live. Drop our feed down and we are ready to go. I think it looks nice. It's exactly what I was expecting it to look like. Just wanted a nice finish on that linear cut. Almost done. Got about a half inch there to go. Stop feed. All right, guys, well, we got that finished up. I think it looks good. Certainly not the prettiest finish we've ever made on the shaper, but I think it's gonna work out fine for our project. It gives it a unique look that has a different appearance from our other finishes there. So on the side, we have a more pretty CNC finish on there. The top, we have our K&T finish from the, the old K&T mill, and then we have our shaper finish here. So I think that's pretty cool. You know, you've got a you got two machine, well, this machine here goes back to the very early 50s or late 40s, I think it was like 48. K and T's from the 50s, and then the CNC is from the 2020s. I just think it's unique to think about it that way. So that's it, I'm gonna leave it just like that. I'm just gonna deburr these corners with a file, but that is officially the last thing that I have to do to the dynamic jaw there. So that is finished up. I'm going to get this cleaned up and get it pulled out. Now, this is going to be a separate video, but I'm going to begin setting up the main body right here so that we can get the inside of it machined to fit this dynamic jaw right there. <laughs> 